Hey guys, happy July 2024. I'm out in a beautiful garden space and trying to get back to just nuts and bolts videos of what I've been uh, doing on this channel. And today's video is called um, How to Grow Your Boas Big. And so I thought this was a good time of year to do it because it's hot. I'm in high feeding mode for all my animals. I've got lots of shedding. Like every week I've got sheds going on in a lot of parts of my collection. And these animals are growing. And um, I think that a common question that a lot of people get or that have in their head when they get a baby boa like this, this is a baby about a year old Argentine boa, is how long till it gets big or how do I grow this snake big? I think that when people start off with boas like this, there's this uh, antsiness to end up with a boa that's bigger than this. And I think that that's not necessarily a bad question to ask yourself or an unfair question to ask yourself as long as you are reasonable about it. Um, and that the other thing I'll tell you is that there's a lot of uh, pricelessness in a baby boa too So just enjoy every stage of your boa But today I'm going to talk about some things that you can do to grow your boas big if you want to do that And I guess the first thing I'll tell you is to manage your expectations This video is kind of like that joke. How do you make a million bucks breeding boas? Just start with two million bucks uh, And that's just to say that boa breeding is not a good way to make money And I'll tell you that starting with a boa constrictor is not a good way to end up with a giant snake they are not Burmese pythons. They're not reticulated pythons. They're not scrub pythons. They're not uh, Cuban bows. They are not going to be um, a giant snake. Uh, and depending on what subspecies you can get, you can get everything from a small snake to a large snake. So um, imagine your expectations. Know that this is not a game for somebody wanting a giant snake. This is not uh, a game for somebody that wants a six foot year old snake or a eight to 10 foot two year old snake. This is not uh, the right uh, complex of uh, genus and complex of snakes to be working with if that's your goal. Um, and the other thing I will tell you is that when I say how to grow your boas big, I mean the largest healthy size, not the maximum size for that species, okay? Uh, and I mean that in two ways. First of all, when you hear like a BCC can get up to 12 plus feet, uh, that is true. Uh, but that is like saying human beings can get to be eight foot tall. That is also true, but it is a superlative outlier. Uh, and so if you uh, equate like full size boas, most full size boas are gonna stay under 10 feet. Most adult boas at 10 years old are gonna be between like six and eight or nine feet. That's just the truth of it. Um, if you ran into a 10 foot boa, that would maybe be the equivalent of running into a six foot 10 person. Uh, in that you probably will see one in your life. You know, most of us have seen somebody that's six foot 10. Uh, and most of you, if you hang around boas long enough, will see 10 foot boas, full size boas. Um, but when you talk about like a 10 to 12 foot boa, you're really talking about like a seven footer, like a, you know, like a seven foot person or seven and a half foot person. I have personally seen and touched a seven foot person because I'm six foot five and I play basketball. A lot of you have never seen or touched a seven foot person because uh, even though you're around people all the time, it's just that rare of a thing. And when you started talking into like 12, 14 foot boas, now you're talking into like seven and a half foot plus people. I've never seen somebody that tall. So that's just mad your expectations. And the other thing I'll tell you is that when you're growing your boas, you need to manage the expectation that um, it takes time. I tell people when you're talking about full-size boa species, like Argentine boas, BCCs like that, a four to five-year-old BCC is about the same size as a big ball python. That blows a lot of people's minds, but it just takes time. When you see these eight and 10 foot boas, they're most likely 10 plus years old. Uh, most of my snakes and my, my big snakes in my collection are in the six to eight foot range. I have a couple that are a little over eight foot. They're all over 10 years old. That's just the truth of it. So um, imagine your expectations. They're not the right species to start with if you want a giant snake. Um, you should be going for maximizing the healthy growth of your boa uh, in relative to its own individual genetics and relative to the specific species or subspecies as it is. And you also need to manage the fact that this is a, uh, to get a full size boa to eight to nine feet that's like a six seven eight nine year project so that's just what i tell you but so when we're talking about what you can do um, there are a lot of things that you just don't have control over but there are about three things that i've uh, identified that are things you can do to maximize the growth of your boas and get yourself from something like this at about a year old this is rita she was produced by mark busby she's a little baby one-year-old argentine boa mark busby uh, true exotics out of Boston Mass. Let me just seal her up. But at one year old, 
you might be able to stick yourself to this, maybe a little bigger, at two and a half years old. This is about a two, two and a half year old bo uh, Argentine boa. Her name is Weaver. She is produced by Frankie Morrissey. And what I will tell you is that the time between a newborn baby and like maybe another year from now, so the time she's like three and a half or so, is a really important uh, proximal zone of development. And when we talk about proximal zones of development, a proximal zone is the space between what is an animal is capable of doing and what it will do with additional uh, scaffolding or support from you. It's an educational term originally, but I'm using it for animals. So um, if you had this snake and you just kind of fed it at an average rate, um, it would get to a certain size just on its own in that one to three and a half, four year area because it's a high growth area. And what you could uh, zone of their life because that for a few years really establishes how big they're gonna get ultimately. Um, what you can do in that proximal zone in the first three or four years of life is you can really try to do a couple of things to maximize its metabolism, maximize its growth. Early, um, the, er, so um, in politics is a, a term, Emily, early money is like yeast, it makes things rise. So in a campaign that has early fundraising will be, grow bigger. Um, e uh, uh, Eggly, early growth is lots of uh, growth, is um, if you can get these boas a little bit bigger than their normal way in the first few years, they will ultimately be much bigger. So um, capitalizing and understanding that in the first three or four years of life, uh, whatever you can do to maximize that growth you'll be able to uh, beget growth in length that will then create momentum for a larger, ultimately big snake. If you start trying to push the size of a snake when it's like three or four or five, um, it's much harder to get more growth. You're gonna get, get, beget more obesity. So I just tell you that most of what you can do to affect their ultimate size has to, is happening when they're young, okay? Uh, and you have a pretty limited control on what you can do to grow them big. But the two things that I would tell you you can do is you can control their ambient low temperatures. Uh, and so if you think of a cage has a hot spot of say 90 degrees and then the cage goes down to ambient or just above ambient temperatures. If you elevate that ambient low temperature up, um, that boa has no choice but to sit in that little bit warmer temperature and that will create a faster metabolism. It will uh, keep its uh, processes up. It will digest food more quickly. It will grow more quickly. Um, and so just again, to give you an idea, I keep in Northern New England, it's very cold a lot of the year. So I'd say at least six to eight months of the year, my room temperature is no warmer than 70 or 72. And then I just rely on small hot spots. And those snakes um, cannot, uh, will sit at that lower temperature and not digest quite as quickly. So if you, I raise that temperature in that room to 75, now the lowest temperature they're gonna sit at is 75, and they're going to have a little faster life process, and they're gonna grow a little faster. I actually realized this because um, I have a friend that lives up here, and he heats his room ambiently up into the upper 70s, and his animals just always grow faster than mine. And I realize it's because when my animals are sitting at 70 degrees, his are sitting at 78 degrees, and they're just always humming along a little faster. And over the course of one to three years, that begets noticeable growth uh, in that proximal zone. So I would tell you, I'm not telling you to raise the hot end. Very specifically, I'm telling you not to raise the hot end. That should still be around 90. Boas don't like it over like 92. They get miserable, okay? Um, and I'm not telling you to bring that ambient low temperature up to 85, 24 hours a day. Um, I'm telling you that it, anything you can do to nudge that ambient temperature up, 75, 80, maybe low 80s for a portion of the day, but it should be coming up and down, um, that will increase the amount of growth over time. And you have to be kind of smart and conservative about it. You don't want to keep your boas at 80 or 85 all the time. They still have to have some breaks. But if you can say maybe, your room, you keep it, instead of it being 70 to 72 degrees, six to eight months of the year, you're keeping it 75 to 78 degrees for six to eight months of the year, you're gonna get more growth out of those same animals. That's just the truth of it. Uh, and now I'm gonna pull out a larger adult snake. Uh, this is an Argentine. This is Gossip. Her name is Gossip because she hisses every time I touch her, or she used to, it's not so much anymore. 
But Gossip is a six year old, about, she's bigger than six feet, shorter than seven feet, Argentine boa. And I would say that she is about average for that age. Uh, and I've been growing her as much as I can uh, healthfully. So Gossip is gorgeous. And this is what you can expect in about uh, six or seven years. So um, other than capitalizing on the early years of life and raising the ambient load temperatures up, the only other thing I think you can really do to beget lots of growth out of your animals is um, controlling food and food strategies. And I have to be careful here. I'm not talking power feeding. I am talking giving an amount of food and in a form that the boas will capitalize on for maximum growth. So I'm not talking bombing these animals so that they grow just obese and gargantuan because a maximum size for a species is not always the healthiest. Um, I'm six foot five and I have a lower life expectancy that somebody that, than somebody who's average heighted. So I'm not telling you to try to go big. But if you can feed those boas in the first three or four years and you're feeding them and you're seeing them digest the food and as soon as they're digesting the food and they're kind of back down, you feed them another animal or another prey item, you're going to get more growth than if you feed them, give them a three week break and then feed them again. Uh, both animals will end up healthy, but if you are feeding them when they need the food rather than and not giving these huge breaks or light feeding them. If you're just actually feeding your snakes consistently when you're seeing them digest the food, pass the bowel movement and then feed them again, you're gonna get more growth out of them. And um, the other thing, this is something I'll tell you, you need to, you need to go over to the YouTube channel for Ancient Reproductions, Bob Guerrier, and listen to his feeding strategies and, metabol uh, uh, and med metabolism type strategies is the form in which you offer the food is as important as how much food you offer. And what Bob will tell you is that feeding smaller items more frequently uh, will keep the metabolism of your snake higher, allowing it to just hum along. And that's going to do two things. A, a higher metabolism is going to create more growth. And also a higher metabolism is going to allow them to process more food more quickly so you can get more food on in a way that's not bombing their gut. So I would tell you that when you're offering that food, you should, if you, in the first like one to four years, you should be feeding them as much as you can see them consuming and using and passing quickly. Um, and you should be doing it in a form that's relatively small. So like something like this, medium rats every seven to 10 days. Um, so say in, a, say in a, um, a month, in a month cycle, you feed them every 10 days. So you feed them three medium rats. That might weigh the same amount as one jumbo rat. But if you are feeding them those three medium rats uh, every 10 days, so they get three feed cycles over that month, um, it is, this snake is probably gonna grow more than if you fed it one jumbo rat that was equal in mass to those three medium rats, if that makes sense. So uh, divide out those feeds into more frequent meals to maintain the metallic. That's directly out of uh, Ancient Reproduction's playbook, Bob Garrier. Uh, go listen to him, he's a lot more experienced than I am. But that's just what I will tell you to do. And I will say that if you do those things in the five to seven year frame with a full size boa, an Argentine, a Colombian, a BCC, something like that, you're gonna end up with a six, seven foot snake. Uh, and in the 10 year frame, ten, uh, time frame, you're probably gonna end up with a seven or eight foot snake. Uh, you will be outliers that are smaller and outliers that are bigger, but that's just what you're gonna end up with. And that's about all you can do um, because that's all that's in your control as a keeper to healthfully create large size in your animals. So uh, thanks so much. Please like and subscribe. I'm trying to get back to making some good videos here for you guys. I had some disruption in my life, but we're coming out on the back end of that. And I'd love to get more engagement from you guys. So take care. Bye-bye.